Good morning, everyone. Dr. Francis Yeo, guest of honor, CEO of National Research Foundation, and the chief funder of EOS. We never forget where the funds come from. <laughs> Mr. Tan Gi Pao, Chairman Earth Observatory of Singapore Governing Board. He's very well known as the head of PUB, and I think uh, very many people know that he got the gold medal for cleaning up Singapore River, one of the earliest things in the environmental uh, cleanup of Singapore. Members of the governing board, members of the scientific advisory board, Professor Kerry C, director. Actually, Kerry is probably the one we have to thank most for making this possible. Without his vision and his determination, I don't think we'll have EOS today. I think Bertie and I just play a helping role along the way. Distinguished guests, thank you for all coming here today. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to NTU for the official opening of the Earth Observatory of Singapore. I would especially like to extend warm greetings to members of the EOS Scientific Advisory Board, comprising 13 eminent scientists and experts from institutions around the world. The Earth Observatory's first annual scientific me program meeting will be held tomorrow. We look forward to hearing your thoughts over the coming two days. This is indeed a proud moment for NTU. Only 11 months ago, the National Research Foundation decided to support NUS, uh, NTU's proposal. NUS is part of this, by the way. <laughs> to create a research center of excellence devoted to the earth sciences with a focus on Southeast Asia, the first for NTU and for Singapore. At yeah, the stroke, NTU is now on the map of world uh, earth sciences community. And we have some one of the best earth science centers in the world. We identify the urgent need for more systematic study of natural hazards, such as earthquakes and tsunamis, volcanoes and climate change, and their potential effects on billions of people living in the region's cities and villages, Sumatra not least. Such events threaten not just our region, but much of civilization. The university proposed to set up a, such a center to attract some of the world's leading earth scientists to work at the EOS and to collaborate with other NTU faculty and students working in related fields. Of course, our director, Kerry C, and his colleagues, Paul Taponier and Chris Newhall, are among the top scientists in the world in this field. I'm very pleased at the progress that has been made in such a short time under the leadership of Professor Kerry C with the guidance of the governing board. The center is taking place, taking shape nicely. Some of the key faculty and administrative staff have come on board, and the hiring of scientists and technicians is progressing well. Only thing I want to urge carry on is climate change. We've got to do a little bit more on that. Faculty from NTU colleges who have committed part of their time to collaborate with the EOS are also located here as research programs get off the ground. And here we have a really multidisciplinary crew. We have Isaac Kello, who was uh, very involved in uh, the documentary and has some proposals to have the media people involved in outreach programs. We have the computer engineering people who are helping with the uh, telemetry, the uh, GPS stations, and the electrical engineering people. It's a truly multidisciplinary NTU effort. As you will see when we tour the facilities in a few minutes, the facility provides a highly conducive environment for scientific research. Everybody is forced to come together somewhere, probably with a coffee machine and things like that. <laughs> Along with the laboratories that we fitted out in the adjoining wing, an experimental GPS station is soon to be positioned on the roof. Is, is it already there? Not yet. Not yet. The station will be a prototype for the next generation of advanced geophysical sensors for seismic monitoring, tectonic analysis, and the like. Data streaming in from our current far-flung monitoring network stretching over 1,500 kilometers along the West Sumatran coast. Much of the information from our new sensors will be collected and analyzed both here in Singapore and in our collaborators' laboratories around the world. This valuable resource of Earth observation data will soon be made available through the EOS website. Another major project already underway at the EOS in collaboration with the Smithsonian Institution of the United States is to refine and scale up the interactive global database, WovoDat, which is created by Chris Newhall, 
on volcanic unrest between and leading up to eruptions. Uh, by the way, many people may know that Chris Newhall is behind the prediction of the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines and the evacuation saved hundreds, uh, tens of thousands of lives. Ladies and gentlemen, we have high expectations of the scientists here. Uh, but I know, I know Kerry will not sweat. <laughs> the need for better understanding and forecasting of environmental hazards has never been greater. In an article in the top journal Science last December, Kerry and his research team warned that the next great Sumatran earthquake is coming in the next 30 years, I think. Such studies will enable governments, non-governmental organizations, and humanitarian and interest groups to better prepare and educate their citizens for such eventualities. Last week, in NTU, we held an interdisciplinary conference on complexity theory, a first of its kind conference in Singapore. It was organized in collaboration with the Santa Fe Institute of the United States and the Institute Paralimes in Europe in honor of Professor John Holland, the creator of genetic algorithms. The Santa Fe Institute is devoted to creating a new kind of scientific research community, one emphasizing multidisciplinary collaboration in pursuit of understanding the common themes that arise in natural, artificial, and social systems. You find people like Murray Gelman, Nobel laureate in physics. You find people like anthropologists uh, analyzing many complex problems and coming together to look for solutions. The Paralimus Institute aims to be a place where new sciences can freely emerge, not hampered by dividing lines between conventional scientific realms or preconceived limits as to what is possible. NGO is now conceptualizing such an institute for Asia, developing a strong culture of multidisciplinary research to eliminate and help solve some of the world's complex mega problems. This could range from the financial meltdown to volcanic meltdowns to tectonic earthquakes. These problems will include, of course, the problems that EOS is attempting to solve. I think one of the most complex is climate change. And I can see EOS being a very strong and valuable component when we embark on such a venture. I'm also very heartened to see in the development of EOS interdisciplinary collaboration taking root and growing. For example, the collaboration with the School of Art, Design, and Media in the documentary you will see later. I'm confident that the research carried out at the Earth Observatory of Singapore, together with our partners in the region and in the world, will generate the knowledge needed to better prepare humanity for such complex cataclysmic events, thus helping to save tens of thousands of lives and safeguard businesses and livelihoods. <coughs> I look forward to seeing EOS grow from strength to strength, even if Kerry does not grow laterally. With Kerry's leadership, guidance, and the guidance of our governing and scientific boards. And I look forward to the support of everyone here today. Thank you very much.